hey, now that you've built a Google form or two, um, your Google Drive will be starting to show some things, you know, hopefully um, you have a quiz you've built and maybe you have a, a Google um, slideshow that we did as a group. Maybe you're starting to build, um, you know, you got a couple Google Docs. What we're going to do now is classroom. Um, so I may divide this into multiple little tutorials, but we're going to get started with classroom. Classroom is not part of Drive directly. So if I got a new, it's not like classroom. That's not going to be there. What we need to do is in our waffle, and I think I had you look, and most of you said classroom appeared. So you can click on classroom to open it. If you do not have classroom, you can literally just go here and type in the address bar Google Classroom and it will load it up. Now you're seeing my school account. Okay, so I'm going to switch to Teachers for Tomorrow and you'll see my Google Classroom for it, which I've used multiple times. I mean, I know how to use it, but I don't use it a ton for this. So I need to build a new classroom. You can see I have multiple ones. This was I built, but then I never had anybody join. So it's just me. So actually, it's probably a good one. I kind of built some things. Oh, there were some people that were in there. So that's not true. So let's just build a new one. When you get into Google Classroom, you've got a plus sign. So we're going to create or join. Joining a class is how the kids would join yours. We're going to create a class. And you can just give it a class name. So I'm going to call it Google Tools um, Toledo. I don't really need this stuff. You can put that in if you want. And I'm going to create. Google immediately creates that for you and is really in your drive creating all kinds of things. So your drive will populate with some things you didn't build. To invite your students, you get a code. That code is right there. Um, I got it. If you click this, it blows it up. Sometimes that's a good thing to screenshot because you forget where it's at. But the kids just go to that same plus button and instead of clicking create, they join. And then if I do that, it's going to ask for the code. That's the code, right? That's the code. So the way slides work is this is kind of like Facebook. There's a stream. Um, the kids can communicate with you. You can make announcements, right? So I can make it to Google Tools. As kids join, you can send them to individual students. So I can send this to Bobby only and not the rest of the class. But I just might say, you know, welcome to social studies class. Now you could write all kinds of stuff. So we have add. When you attach, you can do right from your Google Drive. So you can do your Google Drive and attach a syllabus, right? Now, I don't have stuff, but I'm, you know, this is all junk that we've been doing, but I'm going to attach like this. So I can just click it and attach, and that document is now there for them to see. I can post this, or I can schedule it to post later. So if this is a quiz, let's say I'm ultimately building a quiz and I don't want them to have it for two days, I can literally schedule that. If I schedule it to appear, um, you know, tomorrow at noon, it will appear tomorrow at noon. Uh, I'm going to do that PM, I guess. And it will appear tomorrow. So until then, it's not going to appear. See, it disappears, but the save announcement's here. It's going to come in tomorrow. This is not where the important part of classroom is. Again, you can select your theme and upload different photos. That's up to you. Classwork is where you really want to focus your attention. A couple things are going to happen. As you build things, if you give due dates, it will automatically go to their Google Calendar. So your classroom has a Google Calendar only for this Google Classroom. It's not for anything else. That we're going to worry about later. So if we go to create, I can upload a quiz. And it automatically opens up a blank quiz for me so I could build like we did before. Okay. Or I could X out and I could add the quiz I just built from my drive. So I built a quiz, you know, about red, white, and blue and all that junk we did, right? Is this it? No, no, Google quiz. Here it is. 
and I can add. Now that is going to push to my students and the points were worth how many if you remember 15. I want it to be on a due date. If I pick my calendar and say on that time and save it, um, this when I reload is when I post it is going to show they have a quiz that day. It'll automatically show. Topics are how you organize. So this would be test, right? I can add rubrics if I want. I don't need to. I can call it, you know, uh, test quiz, right? Instructions. I can write whatever I want. Uh, take this to see how Google Classroom works with forms, okay, whatever. And now I assign this. Now I just assigned it. I didn't pick a due date. I didn't change stuff. I just assigned it. And it builds a quiz section. My calendar at this point now shows that automatically. So the kids' Gmail account will literally show they have a quiz due in there automatically. That's kind of a cool feature. The other thing you can do is you can do a class, well, I'm going to skip class drive for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to do, let's say, a question. So I can peep, peep out the question, what are your thoughts about class? And um, I might to make this ungraded. I just want them to do it. And the due date, again, I could not pick one, but I'm just doing this so you can see it populate on the calendar. And I'm going to just say ask. Now that will go to the kids and they can just write an answer. When I open this, I would be able to see their answers. It says turned in assigned. So as people join, it's assigned to 20 kids and I can see 10 have turned it in or 20 have turned it in. And I can click this and see who turned it in and what they said. I'll show you what this looks like in a second for real. What really is important as you build is you can build quizzes, assignments, questions, materials, or reuse posts from other places. So once you build things, you can kind of use them over and over again. The one I keep in track is actually your topics. Your topics become really important because if you look at your stream, it's just going to populate. And kids won't know what stuff is or when they're supposed to do it. So your topics become important. Well, next, let's say I'm going to build a material. And this material is how to use Google Forms. Right? And I want to create, no, I'm not going to create, you can create a doc right from here. I was going to actually just attach something. So I can attach another doc. So let's say I built something. Again, up to you what you're building. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll attach this. It's a hyperdoc, it's a slideshow. This may be something anybody's interested in. So instead of Google Forms, it's gonna be a how to, how to build a hyperdoc. It's a, for the tools, but it doesn't have a topic. So I'm gonna create a new topic called um, sorry, I'm going to create a new topic and I'm going to call it resources. If I post that, what it's doing is organizing my page so kids can find things later. And notice it takes a second because it's building things. So you kind of get how you do this. If we look at our calendar, we now have two things due. As soon as you give an assignment a due date, it appears on their calendar. I'm going to go to a different class that I used Google for so we can see some stuff. So in here you can see um, like Paul uploaded class photos. So there was a Google Drive photo of, uh, we took during class. He, he brought them in and everybody had access to these photos. So you can do a lot with this as long as it's loading. So these are images of class that people took. And then we had images we could use as we were out working. But if we go to grades now, you will see that I didn't grade anything, okay, right? 
but you can tell stuff's missing because maybe I said it was due, right? I didn't really make them do this work and submit it. We were doing it as an example. But you can tell that I assigned stuff to them and nobody did it. Well, that's pretty bad. They didn't do it, right? But that's okay because I didn't, I didn't want them to. I was just showing them the process of how to do it. So as you get kids in your class, um, you will be able to see and view what's going on in your classroom. I hope that makes sense, right? So I can go back to my classwork and I can see a variety of things. We had our food find up sheet and classwork and then we did resources and then there was feedbacks and then there were examples of kids work. So that stuff can all be loaded and pushed out to them. Again, we didn't use it to keep assignments, but if the kids wanted to look at examples, they can click it and it's gonna pull that up. There's the example part. And they don't have to try to find it, right? Versus the stream, if you're trying to find stuff, there's all kinds of stuff here. It's very confusing for kids if you just rely on the stream. When you get it, you have the people enlisted. And again, I apologize, these are actually real people, but you can see I could send, um, I, I could do certain things. I could email just this kid this way. Um, I can send out an email to everybody. So if I go, you know, to see this again, if I want to send a hi, but instead of sending it to all students, now I could just select one, right? I could turn, start turning people off and just say, I only want it to go to um, one person. That could be, I could send an assignment for a kid who needs extra help. So the only one I'm going to send it to is this Travis and post. The only kid that could see that would be Travis. Nobody else is going to see it. This will be confusing as you use it too. Ultimately, it's not extremely hard to build a class. Like we built the class right now. I put assignments in. When you go to have kids join at school, let's say you try it this next week, when you click on it, the code is right there. That's how they join. That's the most important thing to remember because people get somewhere and they're like, I don't know how the kids join. So they go to classroom, in classroom, the main page, they would just click the plus, they're joining a class, and you as the teacher would show them that code and they would join. Anything you put in class will appear for them. So again, I didn't use the digital, I didn't use it for digital students. I think I used it in this class, we actually used it, I can't remember. So like here was the Google Arts assignment, right? So I gave them a doc that told them to do something, we're gonna spend 10 to 15 minutes, right? So it just is a place to organize all the work. Again, I'm making these because I am not feeling real great and I'm a little concerned about how, how I'm gonna feel tomorrow. So um, I'll try to show you some of this stuff and we can talk as a group, hopefully. So that's kind of the Google Classroom in a nutshell. At least you can get started with it. Um, and we'll go from there.